Guys, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the brand new feature um, of knowledge checks in Adobe Captivate 9. Specifically, I'm going to go over some of the technical details on how you can set them up to function the way that you might want or your, or your client might want, uh, depending on the circumstances here. So I've created this little mini module here uh, on computer security awareness, and I've added this knowledge check. Uh, it's going to occur right after maybe a little reading assignment where the user just reads a little bit about, you know, uh, computer security awareness and uh, having to do with uh, email and messaging. So I've created a little knowledge check to test their knowledge once they've read that passage. And uh, we just sort of give them a little scenario here, and uh, they've got to answer it to, and determine whether they've you know, they've really got the essence of the learning there. So I haven't really done anything other than apply my own template here, uh, but this is pretty much a multiple choice uh, question out of the box, and we'll show you how you can set it up. Now in this case, what my client wants is they want to give users the ability to get a couple of attempts to try and answer this question, and then to be forced to jump back to the content if they're not getting it. Because there's only three answers here, I'm going to limit the, the number of attempts to two, and then, of course, force the user to go back and relearn that information before proceeding. Because um, if you gave them infinite attempts, they could just keep guessing until they get it right. So I'm just going to move these captions out of the way so you can see what's going on here. Um, Really, this is just a standard knowledge check. There's nothing really fancy. I've added a graphic uh, just to, to coincide with the, the, the title here and the, the concept that's being covered. But I'm going to need to set this up a little differently because right now as it stands, they could take infinite attempts, keep trying until they guess it right. So a couple things I like to do. Uh, again, I've already changed the number of answers to three. The default is two, uh, but in this case I already have three answers ready and prepared. I do like to shuffle the answers. The reason being, of course, is that each time the user takes this course, we want them not to be, you know, know that the answer is always B or C. Um, this way it, it changes it up a bit and prevents uh, your learners from uh, you know, just following the pattern. Um, you could have multiple answers. Let's say choose all of the correct answers as opposed to choosing just the one correct answer. And uh, we've got some captions already on the screen. The default is the try again caption uh, or retry message. And then there's the um, incomplete message is also a default as well. You can turn that off uh, if you wish, but I think it's useful to let them know that, you know, you really are not uh, encouraging them to skip this content. So let's, uh, let's add a correct caption. So in this case here, we're going to, um, you know, we'll put in, um, we'll put in a correct answer here. And it could be something, I, I like to, you know, the default is fine, uh, correct, click anywhere or press Y to continue. But I like to take this opportunity to reinforce the learning. Uh, so I add a sentence in between these two. And I could say something as simple as put a couple of quotation marks there and say, be skeptical and carefully review the message. It could be an attack, and let's just resize that so people can see that. And I'll just add um, is the correct answer. So again, just reinforcing the correct answer. Uh, click anywhere, press Y to continue. Uh, in courses recently, I've actually uh, taken this part out. It's up to you. You'll still have the ability to press Y to continue. I just like the, the simple message of click anywhere to continue. Uh, one of the things that I do as well, just to add a little bit of, uh, uh, of an auditory cue, is I like to add a sound effect to my 
correct and incorrect captions. So I have, uh, I have those set up here. Here's the correct caption. Just a nice pleasant sound. I borrowed it from the built-in sounds with Windows. And here's the incorrect caption sound. You know, oops, not quite right. So you can actually just take those sound effects and drag them right onto your caption. And let's do the incorrect one on these two fellows right here. So I think we have something there. Now, if we go back to the quiz panel, let's continue down the, the panel here. I don't like to put a time limit on my users, um, unless, of course, a time limit would occur in real life. Uh, the only time you should use any kind of restriction on your users is if that uh, if that um, if that condition exists in real real life. So, um, in this case here, um, there's really no need to have a time limit on this question. I also like to have uh, all of the buttons available to the users. I like giving them full control of their learning. So I'm just going to turn on the clear, the back. And I, la I label my skip. I don't want to encourage skipping of a knowledge check. I just call it next. Um, you know, and especially useful. I mean, it certainly would allow someone to uh, skip, but of course I don't want, um, you know, to force anyone to do anything they don't want to do. So let's just make sure that's checked off. Now, the action, the default action for success, so I've got the correct answer, is to continue. Well, as you can see from my slide, the pause is occurring at a little bit after one second, but this is four and a half seconds. So the learner is going to have to sit through several seconds of nothing happening. So I prefer to change this to go to next slide, and that way it instantaneously continues with the course. Now, in this case here, we already have a try again. So let's set up a message for that, that um, I prefer something a little bit more of an explanation rather than just try again. So what I usually do is I put a message that looks something like this. Incorrect, attempt to recall what you learned in the previous lesson. And you could even be a little more polite. You can say, please try again. Nothing wrong with that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a failure message. Now you might think, well, this is a failure message. It's a retry message. There's a difference here. So I'm going to change this from infinite attempts to the, oh, I lost my retry message, but don't worry, we'll get that back, to two attempts. And I'm going to choose one failure message here. So again, we have a try again message, right? That's your retry message here. We are saying two attempts, but in fact, the failure message is, okay, I'm out of attempts. Here's the message I get before I take the last attempt action. And in this case, the default is usually continue, but I think it's remembering this from a previous state. Uh, I'm going to actually jump the, the user, the learner, back to slide one where they learned this information or should have learned this information in the first place. So my, let's just type in my uh, try again message again because it disappeared and came back. So incorrect, attempt to recall what you learned in the previous, previous lesson and then We'll put a special message for this one here. A little bit different, so we're saying incorrect. Perhaps you overlooked something from the previous lesson. Click anywhere to return to the lesson. And again, you can apply those same, um, those same sound effects just by dragging all the sound effects over. You may get a message that you're overwriting the previous sound effect and then our correct sound effect will go on the green caption. Uh, so let's just go back here. I think we have everything we need. One of the reasons I, I use this uh, graphic 
uh, on my question slide. It's the place where I can put all my captions so that they don't interfere with the other content on the screen. Just a personal preference. So this should work quite nicely now. Let's just do a preview of this and we'll just do the whole project since it's so short. So the user can now read the content here, uh, email from your financial institution. Cyber attackers will often send your messages that sound too, or send you messages that sound too good to be true. Sometimes they'll add a sense of urgency to the message. For example, they might suggest that if you don't click the link to update your personal information, your bank account or credit card will be locked out. Be skeptical of these messages. First of all, your bank wouldn't email you to perform actions on your account of a private nature. Take the time to review these types of messages carefully. So we'll click next to continue. So now we have our knowledge check here. So if you receive a message from your credit card company asking you to log into your account and update your personal information, what should you do? Well, it should be fairly obvious that, um, you know, answer B, because again we had shuffle answers on. It used to be answer A, but it's been moved it down to answer B. That's the correct answer. But let's say I wasn't quite paying attention to what I was looking at on the previous lesson. I'll choose a wrong answer. And you heard that audio cue, just a little reminder that, oh, didn't get that right. It says incorrect. Attempt to recall what you learned in the previous lesson. Try again. So I can just click anywhere to get rid of that or I could hit the clear button. Um, let's try another wrong answer. I'm going to be uh, wrong on this one as well. Immediately take the action outlined in the message. We know that's not right. So I'm going to hit submit. Incorrect. Perhaps you overlooked something from the previous lesson click anywhere to return to that lesson. Now if I gave them infinite attempts, they could just, well, through process of elimination, guess that the correct answer is in fact answer B, and then they could continue. But would they learn anything? Probably not. So let's click anywhere to return to the lesson. So this should jump me back to the previous lesson. I can read it a second time. Okay, I think I know this information now. I'm going to hit next. Yes, it is answer B for sure this time. And I'm going to hit submit. I get the nice uh, caption uh, c confirming that I am correct. Be skeptical and carefully review the message. It could be an attack is the correct answer. Click anywhere to continue. So you can see how knowledge checks can be a great way to get your learners a little bit more involved. This will not interfere with any of the scoring of your final quiz. That's the beauty of the knowledge check feature in Captivate 9. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was informative, helpful, entertaining, interesting, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.